If you're ready to take your brand to the next level in 2023, you do not want to miss this episode. Hello, everybody. This is Jake Sensei, host of Jake and Gino Podcast. We have my co-host, the multifamily mentor, the coach, chef, father, six, the best line author, the G Daddy, Gino Barber. Gino, how's it going? Jake, I'm doing a lot better than you are this morning, my, my friend. How you doing? You wish you were. You will never be doing better than me because I'm doing better than everybody. All right. Always and forever. We have a very special guest today. Today's guest is the founder and CEO of Moda, one of the most recognized branding groups in the U.S. of A. Woo! Her expertise comes from 20 plus years of experience, not opinion or observation. This is this is real deal, folks, getting in the weeds. Her latest book, Forge by Fire, is a step-by-step through crafting a personal brand, uh, personal brand based on what separates you from everyone else. So without further ado, Mila Griggs, welcome to the show. Oh, thanks for having me. If I get through this show without giggling or laughing the whole time, it'll be a miracle. So I'm, <laughs> I'm checking my brand right now is what I'm trying to do. You're checking. Hey, if your brand isn't uh, about uh, sunshine and rainbows, maybe we got to work on that a little bit. Yeah. So, uh, big fail over here. Oh, I love it. So let's get to know each other a little bit better. Uh, please share with us your background and how you got started in business. Yeah, look, I mean, truly, I started in NASCAR when it came to branding. And at the time, I was brand new to the South. I never really heard of NASCAR before and just jumped in. I knew nobody and it was a big nobody and really ended up being a fly on the wall in meetings I probably shouldn't have been in and learned about branding and what it was. And this sport was truly doing it before anybody else. So that's sort of how I cut my teeth, uh, worked and worked with some great drivers and you know, really got to see how uh, brand was the only reason that there was loyalty. I mean, of course you like the sport, but the loyalty to the drivers was like nothing else. I mean, you talk about someone's driver at a Daytona race, you're going to get something thrown at you. Right. And you know, part of that is like, wow, why are these people so loyal? It's wild. Uh, learned about brand and then quickly jumped into, uh, I was watching a driver photo shoot one day and I just thought I can do this better. I looked at the photographer and then I looked at the stylist and thought to myself, you're terrible. This is a true story and I hate to say it, but it was terrible. And then I drove away from that thinking, you know what, I've never done this before, but I think I can do it better with a little practice. And fast forward 20 plus years later, I've been in thousands of closets. So I've dressed executives from head to toe, learned about branding. I've heard all the things about branding from the closet. Uh, learned a what ton. What was terrible <laughs> about it though? I want to know what was terrible about it. So, cause you know. About like, the photo it, shoot itself. Just the whole deal. Like, why were you like, uh, I want to puke here. This is awful. And why did you want to solve it? But you, you, you know, also, why did you want to solve that problem? Because some of us go, that just sucks. Yeah. Move on. I mean, I, I just watched it going on and I thought, okay, first of all, you're unhappy. They're putting you in things that you don't want to be in. You look silly and like dressed not in the way that you should be positioned against like cars in a way that you look, I mean, the drivers look ridiculous. And then the stylist was like, no, put this on, put this on. And I just thought, one, have you ever done this? Do you know anything about brand and loyalty? Um, and it just made me, it, part of me is when I watch someone doing something they shouldn't be doing or communicating how they shouldn't be, it like, ever since I was a little kid, it makes me sick. Like, have you ever seen someone who keeps talking and you're like, you're doing it right now, Mila, but keeps talking and talking and talking and you're going, please stop. And when I see that happening, I just go, stop doing that. And that's so that, I think that's just a part of who I am. And that's why I started the business. And in the book, you talk about branding is authentic emotion. It's not closing a deal, but engaging your audience, increasing your influence and creating connection. Can you just add a little bit more to what really you think personal brand is? Yeah, you know, I think it's more important now than ever. I mean, if you think about what AI is doing, it's making everybody fake, right? Anybody can be smart. Anybody can be an expert. You can post anything <laughs> you want on social media, right? And everybody is so smart. You've seen this chat GPT thing, right? I, okay. You know, have you gone on this yet? I use it like 20 to 50 times a day. No well, kidding. you're, you're sacrificing your brand then because it's making you way too smart. <laughs> I got out of like two weeks ago and I was scared to death. I was scared to death. Holy it's shit. Terrifying. It's terrifying. I mean, the, like the kids, like there are middle schools, high schoolers quite literally getting on this. And um, I think obviously teachers know, but at some point they won't. I don't know how long it's going to learn anything anymore. Yeah. We're some point. 
So Mila, let's talk about branding 30 years ago and branding today. What has really changed? What should the listeners say that this is what I need to be doing today versus what we were doing 30 and 40, even 10 years ago? Yeah, I mean, I think even 10 years ago, uh, social media has changed everything. So personal brand and who you are and what you are, you know, Warren Buffett is the same as the same as the same as he's always been, right? It, 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 personal brand is uh, you don't own it. So if I get off of this and you guys hate me, I guess that's just my brand and I'll cry and it'll be terrible, but that's my brand and you own it. I don't. So those things have stayed the same. Like reputation is the same, uh, what people think about you and say about you, but now how you communicate it is different. Uh, and so storytelling and sharing a story, uh, which you guys really do so well and, and sharing other people's stories makes you authentic versus just an AI bot. Uh, or somebody who is trying to fake it till they make it. So the only difference is the ways that we have to share the story. And you really have to jump into social. So for people listening, entrepreneurs specifically, if you hate social media, don't hate me in telling you this, but you'll definitely fail if you don't jump in. So how you tell it's changed. And you talk about core values. Let's dive into core values because I think that's really important because you say people don't buy what you do, but why you do it. And if you don't have defined core values, and I can be a testament to this. I had one restaurant for 20 years, no core values. And in the restaurant, in the real, in, in the, uh, real estate business, within five years, we had over 1,500 apartment units. And I think one of the one of the big testaments to why we were so successful was we created a mission statement, we created BHAGs, we created core values. So to us, we're real big advocates of it. But why do you think it's so important to creating your brand? Yeah, I think in particular now, it's so easy to get distracted um, by shiny things, right? So knowing who you are really matters. Uh, being able to be described similarly in all situations is so extraordinarily important. And for entrepreneurs, uh, anybody in business, but an entrepreneur specifically, if people know who you are and you have a set of core values that people go, I know who she is, I know who he is in any situation, you can sell anything. I mean, it's why Tesla can go to the moon and then sell tequila. It's why Dyson can be a vacuum cleaner company and then sell you know, bags if they want, right? You have a good core brand as a human being, you can pivot and go in almost any direction because people are buying you for who you are. Most people don't have core values that they've actually set in place and then look at every day through a filter. And then the other piece of that is most people don't think that that's important and they want to do the sexy things of branding, which is social and they want to do graphics. And I'm like, look, if you don't want to create that set of core values first, it really doesn't matter what else you do because eventually you'll be misled and you'll just do what the next cool thing is and you don't know who you are. How do you start by choosing core values though? For someone listening to this, they may never have done it before. Jake and I talk about values-based decision-making, really making all your decisions based upon your values. But most people have never even thought about that. I mean, like whether it's responsibility, long-termism, uh, the values that we hold dear. How does somebody on this listening to this say, I need to start choosing my core values, but where do I start? Yeah, I mean, you start... The easiest thing to do would be to Google brand values or brand attributes and tons of pages in Google are going to pop up and on images, right? And you can see they're just adjectives. And the idea is you have to ask yourself, how do you, who really are you? Um, how do you want people to perceive you when they see you, hear you, read something that you've written? What are those words that you want people to use to share with others about who you are? Um, and then setting those in place. A lot of times people will say, um, describe me. My 13 year old is doing this right now in an entrepreneur class, believe it or not. And she had to ask five people to describe her with five different words. Um, each of them gave her five words and she's like, can you believe they're consistent? And I'm like, yeah, they should be consistent. if you have a good brand, if you don't have a good brand, they're not going to be consistent. And I'll never forget a woman got described as bubbly in a situation where all of her coworkers were describing and doing this brand value exercise. And she was so pissed. She ended up standing up, she slammed her hand on the desk and she's like, bubbly, I'm determined, I work hard, I have grit, like bubbly. And so you have to really know how other people describe you. Um, even though the word might be nice, it may not be how you want people to describe you first. And then every story you have has to come through those core values. Are you embracing people to be themselves or they're not true to their brand? And hold, and before you answer that, the reason I'm asking is because that's what I'm hearing from you, but also I watched Chris Rock, his latest Netflix uh, stand-up the other day, yeah. and he started off by saying, I'm not going to offend anyone here. And then from that point on, it seemed as though he was acting and putting on a front and not just letting it rip. And, and it basically created an experience for me, the viewer, like this dude is holding back 
and not just being his authentic self. And it made for an awkward experience. It wasn't a terrible show or whatever, but it seemed inauthentic. And I think that damaged his performance. So are you advocating for people to just let it rip and be themselves and, and take the gloves off to create a true and authentic brand? Yeah, absolutely. hundred uh, percent. Not everybody's going Why? to like you. Uh, because that's who you are. You're not meant to work with everybody and you're certainly not meant, to, not everybody's meant to like you. Uh, I, I have a very distinct way of delivering information with clients. It's very direct. Other people want someone who has flowers and unicorns and then finally gets to the same answer. So we all have a different purpose and we all have a different, uh, truly destination in life that we're going with and we're not meant to work with everyone. So being authentic. These are your love languages. Yeah, you got it. It's part of it. Absolutely. I mean, as authentic as you can be, as fast as you can be, will bring the people to you that you're meant to be with. And that's really the most important piece. You miss a lot of life if you aren't authentic quickly. Is it okay to miss a bunch of people being yourself? Because what if what if you're, you're kind of, you know, just a miser like me? Yeah, you got me. That's why you got me, baby. They'll, they'll, they'll come to me if they don't come to you, right? So it's okay. We'll balance each other out, my friend. <laughs> I think you do miss uh, the path that you're supposed to be on. I know that sounds cheesy and frilly a little bit, but I, you know, we all have a purpose. We're all created for one. And if we're not who we were created to be, um, obviously through a kind filter at some point, uh, not always, but you know, doing it the right way and communicating the right way and having the respect for the people we're talking to. Um, I, yeah, I do think you miss friendships. I do think you create the wrong friendships. I do think there are business relationships that you probably shouldn't take or ones that you've missed. Yeah, 100%. People need to see who you are, need to see your gift um, and your personality, and they will find you when does they Does anyone need come you. to mind when you say that? Like, does, does anyone come to mind where they've basically burned the ships and they've really lived their true authentic self for their brand, missed a bunch of people that maybe they turned off, but were successful by going that route? Who, who comes to mind to you, Mila? Well, I mean, I think there are successful people like the Elon Musks of the world who a lot of people hate, you know, I mean, I think those are the people when they're authentically themselves, and then they have a high driver personality. Those are the ones that typically split the people in half. Um, you either love them or you hate them. I mean, look at Donald Trump. He's a great example of love or hate, right? And it stirs an emotion in you one way or the other, typically. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think there Elon are came out of the closet in the last year, right? Who what? what? I said Elon came out of the closet in the last year or so. Like, he, he was kind of reserved, and now he's just letting it rip. <laughs> yeah, I think he is who he's always been, but now he's just ready to let it rip even more. Um yeah, but I mean, I think that's the idea. Like, not everyone's going to love you, but will he leave a legacy in the world that's hopefully good on some levels? Probably. Um, other people will hate him. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, not we're not all called to that insane purpose, but uh, or to be that out there with it. But yeah, I think that you'll definitely miss where you should be for sure. Jake, to answer your question, I think Dave Chappelle on the other side does what he wants to. doesn't care if he gets canceled. He lets it rip. He says the most obscene things, but he says them whether you're liberal, or whether you're conservative, he doesn't really care. So yes. people are attracted to that. And they may be awkward because of some of the things he says, but you don't have to listen to him. It's okay. Just shut the TV off and move on. Go listen to something that's not funny to you. I think I think he's the perfect example. But that's example. where it's changed in the last few years, where if it's something that you don't like, just move on. That's not necessarily the way people act anymore, and they kind of keyboard warrior and attack you. So what do you do about that? I don't know. Consistency. I mean, be consistent. Yeah, it's key. You yeah. know, uh, at some point, if you're doing the right thing for the right reason, even if you're even if you're Dave Chappelle, um, if you're consistent, eventually your brand is just your brand. It is who you are. Um, so consistent. Yeah. Most people just are up and down and then they share different messages. And most people actually share a message without establishing any equity first. So a lot of times people would be like, why? What do you mean by why? that? So people have to know who you are to care enough to listen to you, right? Uh, you have got to share messages in a way where people go, like if I share a message with my close friends or even the business community here in Nashville, and, I, and I'm sharing with a group of liberal friends or Republican friends, if I share a message, typically I'm not going to get hit too hard because people know who I am in those circles, right? Those smaller circles, they know my heart, they know my intention, they know my purpose, and they know who I am as a human being. So the filter is different. But on social media, we're yelling these messages and we're wondering why people aren't listening or respecting us. And the idea is because nobody knows who the heck you are. You have to build a brand. You have to share your message consistently. And then when people get to know who you are and who, what your heart is, good, bad, or ugly, 
then you can start sharing and then they can start listening. And most people just um, haven't established credibility. So that brand equity is so important. So Mila, we were doing some work with Ryan Serhant. He spoke at our event last year and he's a big brand expert. His, yeah. th his three pillars are core identity, consistent content and amplifying your message. And, you know, I want you to walk through what you think someone like Gino who really hasn't started. I've got my core values. What is the next steps that I should do? Should I start sharing my message? Should I start putting a website together? What, what, what should I be doing next? Yeah. I mean, it, depending upon who you're trying to get to, right? Like, obviously we all have a goal of different people listening, different demographics, but yeah, I mean, hundred percent, every core value should have 10 stories behind it. You can't walk into a room and say, I'm the smartest person in the world because people are like, are you crazy? But you can say, I am a hard worker and in, in, in a story, I am intelligent, but use it in a story. So storytelling um, is truly one of the most important parts of branding because people don't want to hear what your opinion is. But if you share it in story, obviously stories are remembered, what, 22 more times than facts. So says Stanford. So when you think about storytelling, um, that's the piece that matters, but stories that match your brand attributes. So I have a very low tolerance myself for people who don't work hard um, and complain. And that comes from a story of my grandfather when I was 11 years old, I, I Serbian heritage, he fought the Nazis in World War II. I'm pretty sure I thought they were gonna kill me as a child. He was still living this war, right? And he would say a bad day. Like I'd come home from school and he'd be like, you're having a bad day. What are Nazis shooting at you today? I mean, you weren't allowed to have a bad day in my life <laughs> at all. I mean, it was like, okay, they're not shooting at me. I don't see any, we're fine. And then he'd be like, I got Your shot. Your grandpa in the leg. sounds I'm like an awesome guy. Insane, right? So you've got to share these stories through those core values so that people can bond with you. And that's what people are not doing. And then what he said about amplifying your voice. I mean, you guys are the most perfect example of helping other people to amplify their voices. You have to find those ways and do them. How do you find your story? It's what you've lived. And most executives, most entrepreneurs will tell me I don't really have a story that's interesting. Um, or that's worthwhile. And so you just get people to tell your life story. It's how you were raised, how you weren't raised, were you adopted? Did you have a crappy time in high school? What did you learn? What didn't you learn? Um, did you go to college? Why didn't you go? I mean, it's like, the, you know, it's like the Gary Vaynerchuk's of the world. Everybody knows his story and his story is on repeat. And all you do is hear the same stories, but that's consistency. Like if you're listening to a podcast today or 10 years ago, you're going to ish hear the same kind of story and what his thoughts and beliefs are. So that's the idea. It's your life and what you've lived. And sometimes your greatest failures can be your best stories. And you have story qualities in the book. Let's go over some of them because it's important to be when you're building a story. I know you have memorable, connects people, builds loyalty. There's, there's a list. And help, let's help the listeners try to build their story and make it more memorable, make it more uh, relatable to them, make it stand out to them. How, how do we do that? Um, how do you how you make their stories more memorable? Like, how do you take them and grow them? Ish. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about the story qualities. I'm putting the story together. I mean, how do we? Yeah. What are the qualities of that that make up a, a good story? You know, there's a great book um, by a guy named Donald Miller who wrote Story Brand, and it true. He mm -hmm. talks about it in there, and it's you know, it's a it's talking about like who's the hero of the story. So if you're an entrepreneur in particular, the hero of the story is the client, right? But the idea about storytelling is people aren't buying services or products anymore, especially in this world where we will not know soon or soon what's fake or what isn't. So the idea of telling your story is that you're giving human. What do you mean by that? What do you mean well, by that? Well, AI is going to write everything, right? Like all social media posts, websites, um, papers in universities, like chat GPT, and then whatever comes after that, chat GPT four, and whoever makes the next one, everything that's written that you're going to see um, will most likely have a touch of AI. And in the years coming, I don't know if not almost everything. Low to right. zero value then. So people are going to absolutely value the true human, the, the poets, the people that are actually doing it. It becomes like woodworking now all of a sudden. Yeah. You aren't kidding. Like the old ways of marketing will like start to get in there. Like yesterday I told a client, send them, send the person cookies. And they were like, why? I'm like, because all the notes you're sending look like everybody else's notes. I mean, these are things that people were doing like 20, 25, 30 years ago. Um, it's Craving going to get authenticity to then is what you're saying. Authenticity. You guys, yeah. what you're doing becomes more important than anything else. I mean, truly this medium that you have that you've nailed um is if if it's not the most important it's right up there at the very top because this is what people actually want human touch voice and real they do not want anything else 
what else can we do to combat though? Combat that with Chat GPT. Jake, by the way, if you say Jake and Gino or Julia and Gino, my wife comes up as a multifamily investor who helped create Jake and Gino. I'm like, Chat, come on, where's my boy Jake in this thing? So Chat GPT is not really that that uh, that uh, that realistic or that that uh, what's the word? I, my wife has got nothing reliable. to do with me buying 1,500 units. Maybe on the personal side, not reliable. Not on the business side. You know what I'm saying? She wasn't there. She still doesn't know what refine roll is or a cap I'd be, rate I'd is. I'd be worried she- about her, man. Maybe she's like <laughs> feeding it some code that we don't know about, and she's like doing things. You should really look into that, Gino. <laughs> Thanks, Jake. Now I have nothing to worry about, brother. Come on, man. You're killing me here. But what else can we do i mean like let's stand out let's make our brand stand out because i really i really despise instagram i'm not gonna lie to you guys it's all flipping off 60 second videos you don't get to know the person all it is is pictures so what mistakes can we avoid what are the mistakes are there out there that were that people are making with their brand yeah really i mean it really starts back to the core value piece but then not, just not knowing who you are and what the story is you want to share so before you start sharing figure that out Like, what is it that you want to share with the Mm -hmm. world? Most executives, even those that I've worked with who are at the pinnacle of their success and truly in industries. I mean, I've had the honor of working with people who, I mean, I probably shouldn't have years ago at such a young age. I mean, that is the truth. And hearing their success stories, but then also hearing as they retire going, I think I've missed my legacy here. I, I probably should have talked to this audience versus this one. Um, so when you think about storytelling and building your brand, you have to think, what are the greatest gifts that I have? And most people actually don't think about that because again, it's that cheesy, non-tangible piece. So what is the gifting that you have that nobody else has? And I know when I say that some eyes roll and they're like, are you really talking about gifting? And I'm like, yeah, because you do something better than nobody else does. So what is that? And then monetize that. And then you have to think like, what are the things that I need to share about myself? so that people grab on to pieces of who I am, right? And you have to go, okay, what are the most important pieces to share? And then what is the legacy that I wanna leave? And what is the gifting that I have? And then how do those come together and weave together? That is the piece that most people miss because they're so afraid of sharing um, in general. And they're so afraid of sharing pieces of themselves, unless you're like an Instagram influencer um, and you're you know, half dressed or you're you know, selling a product, you really are like, as an entrepreneur, you're going, what the heck do I put on there? And I'm like, you have to give Well, it's people- weird though. It is a little weird. It's super weird. Like, oh, like I have my private life and it's all of a sudden like, oh, to grow a brand, you have to start sharing bits and pieces of that. And I feel like it yeah. erodes at your soul. And it's this constant little like shaving down of, of your soul. And I'm like, it grosses me out many times. Like we're here doing this. I'm happy to be here. But there's a lot of stuff that goes into this influencer branding space that makes me want to puke and it's kind of gross. So how do you how do you deal with that? If I'm just being honest right now, maybe I shouldn't be saying this, but hey, I'm being true to myself, mofos. What's up? <laughs> favorite ever okay just yeah so you're you both know. laughing because you know it's true <laughs> <laughs> well you know it's funny you, you say that the, the reason why you say, you say that this weekend i'm making stuffed artichokes with the kids and they're like let's take a video let's do it. i don't i don't want to take an effing no, video because you enjoy me. doing it gino and that's why when you start to erode at the stuff you really <laughs> enjoy doing you stop enjoying it it's the same story that i've told you a million times i got out of school i didn't know what to do so i started personal training because i have a meathead and i like lifting weights all of a sudden i get these people bitching to me i don't want to be here jake this sucks so i start hate, hating working out so sometimes you got to be careful because uh, it's a slippery slope when you get too close to the things that you enjoy to share too much of that because the world does a great job at eroding your joy when you let it out of the bag oh it's so true did i just stop the show are we bad i think we're done it was nice talking to you great thanks for having me on thanks in other words no brand after brand yeah i'm done i'll never work again it's good thanks thanks jake it's good no no but ultimately so but here's the flip side of it yeah, I, I have a I have a way to combat this and bring it back for you. So on the flip side of it, I don't truly like we're in the multifamily business, right? Yeah, I, I don't like have this huge passion for real estate or architecture or any of this type of stuff. But I do truly enjoy what we do because we're damn good at it and it provides a good life for ourselves. So that intersection where we actually promote 
how to invest, how to be a successful investor. I enjoy these types of conversations and I'm fine promoting those, but it doesn't erode into that soul suckingness that I talked about, like when I'm, I'm sharing stuff maybe about myself personally working out or whatever. So it's different when it gets into that that is more professional for myself and I'm more open to sharing it. And I'm sure a lot of this is personal. So, yeah. you know, I'm not totally innocent or clean here, I guess, right? So No, I love uh, it. I mean, it's, it's hard. You're not wrong. It's a balancing act for sure. I mean, it's the, it's yeah. one of the pieces that I think most people that we work with or talk to are just like, I don't, I don't really want to share that. And most people in particular don't want to go on LinkedIn. Most people actually um, hate Instagram because it's it, you have to do it all the time and it's hard and you yeah. have to show pieces of yourself. But it's one of those things where you, this is how you find opportunity. Now we used to go to networking meetings and we used to network and be there and meet two people at a time. And now we can share on social and meet 15,000 people at a time and then hopefully win them over and, and have a purpose in helping them. Like you do with work, like how do you invest? How do you grow a legacy? How do you grow a portfolio? Those are the things that people need to know. Um, and there are more than just you to pick from. So why would I pick you to follow, to be led by versus someone else in the same industry? Because for us dummies out here who aren't there, we don't know the difference. We don't know why you're smarter at it than someone else. So I'm truly picking you for the personal piece that you have that my heart or my mind connects to. Um, and I think a lot of people are missing opportunity. And I, and I know for a fact, a lot of people are missing more money. Um, if financial, if financial freedom or financial, uh, having a financial foundation is your goal, because they aren't sharing pieces of themselves that others would latch onto. I agree. So Makes Mila, what do you, what do you think the split should be as far as percentage of personal versus professional versus what they say, the, like the why or the it, what do, what do you think it should be? Yeah. I mean, it depends on the platform. I mean, if we're talking about LinkedIn, it's one, one or one or two times a month is personal and always tied into business when it's Instagram, it really depends on your demographic. If I, if I'm going after a specific client, if they're, if I'm going after a bank in Boston versus a bank in Florida, I'll post very different things on different channels because I'm chasing somebody. Um, I used to say I'm, you know, killing the elephant and then I was told I was politically incorrect and I'm like, whatever anyway, but if I'm trying to find a client and kill the client and get them, I'm going to post different things. So personal, uh, will lag on certain months. And then other months, if I'm going after another client where I know we relate, I'm going to push really hard. So it depends upon your brand, who you're going after in that specific moment. And then obviously your demographic in totality. Um, Instagram is both. Facebook is more business, uh, obviously a business page. It's going to be maybe one time a week personal ish. Um, on your personal Facebook, that's your own, you know, whatever you do there. But on Instagram, it's all over. That's a dependent on your demographic. I hate to answer it like that. It's not really an answer. And what kind of content? No, no, it's a great, no, no. I like the answer because it, it is sense. different. It, and for us, that's why we're not the TikTokers of the world because we're looking for a higher demographic and it's really hard to explain cap rates. And, you know, it's bad enough meathead over there with a chainsaw going on LinkedIn and going on Instagram. I can't imagine him on TikTok. I'd love to see that, bro. I'll do a, I'll do a, I'll do a TikTok <laughs> chainsaw dance if it wasn't controlled by the Chai Coms. I can't get on there. <laughs> What I forgot my I forgot my, my question. <laughs> Man, I got you, you, today. <laughs> you you could have like five million followers on TikTok. It's hysterical. Do it. Not good. Um, we Not we it. do try to provide value here, and I think I mean that's that's the thing. You you've given so much value as far as the branding. I should have asked in the very beginning who should be creating a brand. Is creating a brand for everybody? For a personal brand who works, yes. You already have one. Uh, so that's the problem. Do you know what it is? And do you know what others are saying about you? I think that's one of the hardest pieces of building a personal brand in particular. Someone will say, I think I'm a great leader. And then I go into companies and I've been hired by someone to be like, hey, fix this team. And then inevitably it turns into personal branding, right? And, I, and I'm like, well, who do you think you are? Tell me about your brand. How do you think people perceive you? And they're like, I'm this great leader and everybody follows me. And then I talk to their team and they're like, we hate him. He gossips. He's horrible. Yeah. <laughs> and, I have to go, and I have to go back to that person and be like, actually, everybody hates you. We're going to fix this, but you're hated, right? And I think that dichotomy is always really, uh, used to, it used to surprise me years ago. Now I just expect it, but you must build a brand. <laughs> you already have one. So you have to be intentional about 
how do, what do people really think? And don't fool yourself. Most people have a different opinion than you might think. Know your brand, have some self-awareness. I love it. It's hard, isn't it? It's wow. so hard. Don't ever ask I'm just trying, yeah. or your spouse. Ask your wife, what do you really think? That's always really painful for sure. It's a good one. What do you really think? Now I'm used to it now. Words, she just honey. beats the crap out of me. <laughs> Yeah. Give me five words. She's like big dumb loser. <laughs> <laughs> big dumb meathead chains chain chains chain, and loser. That, that's it, right? That's that's a that's a mouthful there. Wow, uh, Mila, why did you write the book? What made you write the book? Uh, you know what? I hate I hate when people miss uh, their purpose. I do, and I have been in so many companies as a marketing branding consultant, and then. I'm going, why aren't you making more money? Why are you still stuck in this position? Why are you as an entrepreneur not selling more product? Because the product's amazing. Like, What is happening here? And then I hear people like, I need more financial stability. I have four kids in college. I've just gone through divorce. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, if you just shared who you actually are versus hiding it, uh, you would not miss all this opportunity. And we work so hard that sometimes we miss the idea that other people need to know who we are to build us. I have seen... So many people who do not deserve to be in certain positions because they have a great brand, but there are other people who are more experienced, more knowledgeable, and frankly, more passionate about the company they either own or work for, and they're not where they should be. So I wanted the book to encourage and inspire and really uh, give people some of those soft skills they think that are, may not be necessary, but are more necessary than ever, like emotional intelligence, communication. So they don't miss any more opportunities. I hate it. I hate it when someone should be making more money and they're not. I hate it. It kills me inside. So she wrote the book for us, Gino. <laughs> Shut up. That is so No, but true. it's it's true. So we <laughs> No, let's check this out. So so we, you know, for people in our in our space specifically, we actually have our own management company. We actually own our own assets and we've done uh investments where we raised money before. But, you know, if you look at Everything that we're actually doing as real business owners compared to a lot of people that are in our space, we just don't promote well. We're, we're not probably good promoters because we don't love leaning into a lot of this personal stuff and it's uncomfortable for us. So I think we've actually held ourselves back uh, probably from our education company because we're not willing to go there, if you will, with some of this stuff. So I think we're, we're a great example of probably, you know, who you wrote the book for, to be honest. And part of the problem is that we have, I have certain strongly held beliefs. I've got six kids practicing Catholic. We homeschool. I don't need the government for anything. Dan, you're just taking in, the red pill. <laughs> I've been in business. I've been in my own business since 1994. So people know where we stand. And I don't want to alienate the other half because I like to keep that dialogue open. I want to convert people to the to the life that Jake and I are living. So how do we do that? And it's been a, it's been a process. Me and my wife have a podcast. We have a family, you know, family podcast. We talk about spousal relationships and all. So it's a very fine line to have. And nowadays, like Jake said, I don't want people just shutting us off completely because I do want to bring content with the multifamily space. But at the same time, how do I attract families that are struggling that want to have that financial freedom and you know there's there's not many ways that we can offer to work with people because we only have one price point basically we do have books and other stuff so there's the challenge that we're having is not trying to alienate a lot of people because when they hear certain certain demographics they're like oh i'm not going to listen to that person at all and i don't want that i want them to actually listen to us because we're pretty open-minded the word liberal really means liberty it's a lot closer to, to conservatism that what they're trying to portray nowadays. And I think they've co-opted our language and for, for what's going on right now, I don't want to alienate people. So that's, that's the challenge that Jake and I are having, or we're walking this fine line to where like, we're really guys investing, trying to teach people about investing. But at the same time, we want families out there to say, Hey, it's okay to be doing things a little bit differently than what the norm is. Yeah. I love it. That makes you know, sense. I think that right there is the biggest piece. So Understanding multifamily industry, I, I fortunately I do because I've worked with so many multifamily companies and I understand the goals, you know, ish, right? Every business is different, but people, I'll go back to what John Maxwell says about leadership. And I'm, I'm, I'm a big John Maxwell fan. Um, he says to, to lead is to love. And as cheesy as that sounds, some of the greatest leaders in the world, if people know that you actually care, if people know why you do what you do, if people know your purpose and your passion and you're saying it, and they know that you actually want to help. That's what I'm talking about, brand equity, right? The idea that people know you first and then they hear what your thoughts are. That's the whole goal. I mean, so on a completely different note, like I, I love the Lord. My faith is my, the biggest part of me. 
the biggest compliment that I've ever received was from a book, uh, book w- reviewer who I thought was going to butcher the book because it has pieces of that in it. Um, and they said, as much as I disagree, this is the first book that didn't push it down my throat and I'd read it again and I'd give it to everybody else. And I, th- I thought at that point, like I could die today. This is literally the exact thing that I wanted, but didn't think I'd get to. So it's people have to know who you are, know that you care, know your story. You have to give people those relational moments. Um, the moments with your wife while you're laughing, like the two of you have the best personalities in the world. It's easy to love you both on impact. So being able to actually share those pieces and then share the other side, it gets people to go, God, there's something different about you. I want to follow you. I want to be around you. I want to listen to you every day because there's so much more. And then wait, tell me about that faith or tell me about your family values or tell me about why you have this company. So that brand part is why the book was written and why it's so important because without that, you're literally missing an entire demographic. People don't know that you love them and care about them, they're not going to listen to you. So what you're doing, I think, is pretty perfect, frankly. Did that go too deep, too fast? Let's I don't even, deep. I don't know. No, not, no, not at all. I wanted to bring it on. I wanted to bring it, take a little quick time out for the sponsors, but I, I think Jay can continue that along on the, on, the, on the next side because it's important. I love what you said because not shoving it down their throats, but, but being a little, uh, a little, what's the word? When, when you're just, you're not really, you're not really being forceful, but you're just telling your side of the story. And hey, I'm not trying to convert anybody, but this is who I am. And it's made me into the person that I am today. And it's okay. Not everyone has to like you for who you are, but at least they can respect you. If nothing else, I want people to respect another person's choices and whatever. And you don't know what that person's gone through in their life. So, I mean, you're not trying to be the convert, but you're just trying to spread the message. So I love the book. Let's take a quick time out to hear from our sponsors. A question, Gino, and I get a lot is, what's a great value add? You've just closed a deal and you're looking for a way to maximize the attractiveness of your complex to potential renters. At Rand Property Management, we start at the bottom. Literally, we start with the flooring. And that means we start with a call to Christian Chapman and his team at David's Abbey Carpet and Flooring. No one wants to deal with the expense and hassle of putting in new floors, and that is exactly why we turn to David's Abbey. David's Abbey Carpet and Flooring provides a quality, long-lasting product at a great price. The wear layer and waterproofing that comes standard with all David Abbey products will ensure you are on solid ground for years to come. My favorite part of working with Christian and his team is convenience. David's Abbey will direct ship their product anywhere in the U.S., That's white glove service, folks. And your installation team will love how easy it is to install. The next time that you're looking for a great value add, give our friends at David Zabby Carpet and Flooring a call and speak with Christian. Or click the link in the show notes to visit their website today. All right, we're back. Gino, it's the famous Jeffrey Gittimer quote. People don't like to be sold, but they love to buy. I think that's the the root at what the two of you are saying right now. And that's where Mm -hmm. that intersection is taking place. Uh, Mila, break us down right now. Uh, we're we're here. We're we're two guys struggling to build a brand. Where are we going wrong? Where where do you see Jake and Gino struggling? Now, don't give us that shit. Remember what you said. Hey, tell us how we suck. All right, that's what we want to hear, and we're not letting you off until you do. <laughs> Truly, I don't think you do. And I've done the research, right? I mean, I've looked, I've listened, I've watched. I think that it would come down to what are your ultimate goals. Like ultimately, I mean, I know what your mission statement is. I've got it in front, right? What is the ultimate goal? And then I'd be like, how are you? Are you there? Are you walking toward that goal? Are you with that vision in mind every single day? That would be the biggest question I would ask if you were like a client. We sat down, right? I'd say, okay, and you guys are who you are. You're really consistent. You know, you know what you're going to get. I, I knew where I was coming today. Um, and I was excited and it fits like who I am. And I mean, just a very exciting thing. So we know who you are. The goal is where do you want to be? And are you walking toward that every day? And I'm not sure what your ultimate, ultimate goal is. Yeah. I don't know that we are either. We're getting there. (laughs) (laughs) How much time you got, bro? I mean, like the, well, listen, the ultimate goal, honestly, for me, overarching would be to promote family life, promote the nuclear family, teach people about financial intelligence, teach the young and the young adults about, uh, 
about money, about finances, stuff like that, and then ultimately creating multifamily entrepreneurs through our platform. And and you know, our BHAG is to have a thousand people leave their W two jobs by the year twenty thirty. We're at one hundred and ten right now. So I think that's the ultimate goal is by providing all this in, in information. Listen, we've been through eight. We've been telling people for the last two years, oh, it's coming back. How do we? How do we? You know you know, prepare ourselves for it. And I think that's part of what our ultimate goal is really to bring really great content that people can use. And by building this amazing Jake and Gino community that has mentorship students who are buying these assets. That's, I think, the ultimate goal uh, of what we're trying to accomplish. Jake, what say you, my friend? Yeah, no, I'm I'm with you, Gene. I think it's, we've created buy right, manage right, and finance right, which we believe are the sound pillars for multifamily investing. And We've you know been lucky enough to have this platform to be able to share those with people, and it's created you know great success where billions of you know, apartments have been purchased through it, and it, it feels good because I know we're doing it the right way, and you know we're not taking people on that can't get it done, and so it's selective, and and I think we're we're creating a group that is to Mila's point, create an impact. And that feels good because I know there's other people in the space that are not doing it right. And that goes to the the part that I mentioned earlier about shaving at your soul. You don't want to be doing that or be bringing people into your community or your world that are not going to be able to perform. And I think that's where you, you know, it gets a little mm-hmm. weird in the education space at times. Mm-hmm. So that I feel very, very good about. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're nailing it. What I about, mean, uh, what about, no, go ahead. I was just going to say what I would love to hear off, maybe off camera, what you guys think about Grant Cardone's brand. No, I think we just do it here. There's no reason to hold back. I mean, because that'd be against our brand, right? So I think I think the thing that Grant has done exceptionally well has been sort of what we've been talking about this throughout this whole show. He shared his personal life with people at a level that's been completely unrestricted and mm-hmm. and uh, to the point where you haven't seen it before. So he had somewhat of a first mover advantage there where he goes out and he'll show everything that he does. And I'll give you a little, you know, exposure into my life. I'm not comfortable showing the things that go on in my personal life from a wealth perspective with the world. And I think that's historically been the case for people that are pretty wealthy. There, there's things that I'm not going to show in yeah. my personal life that that are that are tied to wealth that it frankly makes me uncomfortable and it kind of grosses me out. Whereas, and and it's great that Grant is comfortable enough to do that because it ultimately allowed him to get a ton of people to invest into his syndications. And that was the real intersection that his wealth exploded because he was willing to go there and not have a filter and show every single thing in his life. For me, that's where we start to shave at my soul and I become less of who I am as a real person. And I'm not willing to go there and sacrifice that for the extra money. I've already made it. I'm already extremely wealthy and I'm happy where I am. I want to still grow financially. I still want to grow and prosper, but I'm not going to sell my soul. And I'm not saying that Grant sold his soul. He may be completely comfortable where he is and it may not impact him personally or professionally. I would not be the same human with the same integrity and ethics that I have if I went there. I'm not saying he's a bad person because he did. It's just not for me. Well, your brand is not trying to attract. You're not your. Our brand is trying not to attract people who want to buy Lamborghinis. That's not what our mission is. Our mission is to attract people who are, you know, twenties to fifties, trying to get out of the rat race. And and that's not the goal. Is not to buy the Lambo. The goal is to I can stroke a check for the Lambo, but that's not really what I want. He's his his brand is about to be. He's brash and he's a billionaire. That's what his brand is. And I think he's done a fantastic job doing that. Um, and he says some outlandish things at times. He's got amazing products, which is which sometimes people don't realize. Like his sales trainings and stuff they provide a ton of value for people and they don't really i I don't think people see that um and i think i think i echo jake's sentiments i think he's done a great job Personal exposure it's it's the personal exposure in his private life that i'm not comfortable with like that just i would not be able to wake up every day and be comfortable living the life that i'm living having that type of personal exposure i just know intuitively. And I've had conversations with my wife about it too, in terms of what we're going to share on social, what we're, where we're going to go with it. So we're very yeah. in tune with each other. And it's just for us, it's just off limits. We just don't want to go there. We're not comfortable with that. Mm-hmm. Someone like Grant, he's been able to lever that and do extremely well with it. So hats off to him. Uh, it, it's just, it, it's again, it's a personal choice and a, a personal comfort thing where you want to go with this stuff. No, so. I love it. I love it. I yeah, think what, so that's what, the what Gary Vee route, which I love. I mean, and, and both, that's the idea. Both can be done. Both can be done. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
I, uh, I, I feel comfortable talking about the business stuff and, and like keeping the, the personal stuff for my family and, and, you know, my closer associates. So, yeah, yeah. no, I, I love it. And he showed you that it can be done and you've done it. So I love it. I mean, I think I, what are your, so what are your thoughts about it though? I want, I want to hear more from you. You're the expert here. Come on, tell me you, you got to open up now. You know, I, I, I will tell you this. I sent the book out to a ton of people um, who I put in the book and, you know, thank them for things or just said, hey, this inspired me. I put you in the book. And I mean, I'm talking a ton of people. And there were about four CEOs who wrote personal notes back. And he was one uh, before that moment. Gary, I, Gary or Grant? Grant. Okay. Um, I was probably a little questionable. Um, you know, you're just not sure what you see. I think that's the piece of the brand that's so different from both of you, which is why I brought them up because you're very, very real. Um, and with Grant, you can't really tell all the time. You're you're going, I just can't really tell. And now he's doing the thing with his wife where I think it's like their first 10X couples thing. I think I just saw that yesterday. Anyway, long story short, you just aren't really sure. And then there are moments like that where you get a personal note and it's really very kind. And you're going, okay, there, there might be more to this. And it was the next, like the next day, I'm like, how on earth did this even happen? So I think that there are more moments that he can show where he's calmer, where he could show a different brand that I think more people would buy into. I'm really leery of oh, yeah. a boastful brand. Um, and I think he probably has it in him, but he's just not showing it. And that's fine. But that, I think that's the overall opinion. I, I'm not sure yet. We'll see where it goes. We'll see where it goes. I'm, I'm wondering if, if, yeah, I'm wondering if with Grant, the brand and the avatar that he created for who he is absorbed him and he kind of morphed into that, if that makes any sense. Like there's, there's Grant and then there's post Grant. I started marketing myself and I, I almost get the feeling like he became the avatar that he promotes. And I'm wondering if you can get through to the real person anymore at this point. And I, I don't know him. We had him on the show back in the day, but yeah. I don't know him on a personal level like that. So I just, you know, from following his content over the years, you, you almost get that feeling and because it's, it's sort of like this, you keep doing something that's bringing you success. So you do kind of lean into it and, and like, where's your, you know, original self. And, uh, and, and, you know, again, I'm, I'm not, I, I probably sounds like I'm criticizing the guy. He's absolutely fucking killing it. You know, yeah. hats off to him for all the success that he's had. Um, but it's just, those are the, the types of conversations that we've had, you know, at, at my house about, you know, the, the branding and, and the marketing side of things. So. Yeah, no, it's a it's a huge decision to make. And the fact that you and your wife are doing it is more than most people do, frankly. I think a lot of people make that decision alone. And that's when disaster strikes. So you you're, I mean, you're on it. You're absolutely on it. Yeah. Um, any any books that you've read uh, besides your own in the last year or so that you want to uh, promote to the folks? Yeah, man, I'm a big fan of Ray Dalio um, principles. I, have you? I don't know if you've all read that. It's like five. Oh yeah, pages. I've, I've read, read I've read it like th like two or three times. Yeah, yeah. yeah, same, right? And I go back to certain pages, and uh, that's a huge one for me when it comes to money in general. But just really living life and principles in business, I think he's one of the best. And it's really interesting when I say his name, depending upon where I am, people love it or hate it. It's wild. Really? Yes. And I thought it was a safe name, um, but not always. Not always. Um, and then I'm elaborate. Really uh, this is new uh, to me. So elaborate. Yeah. Like when I, well, I'll always say the people that I love. And so people will say, what books? And I'm always talking about principles and they'll say, well, well, he was wrong. Or did you know what he did in 1970 something? And, uh, if somebody makes a mistake like that or says something that doesn't come true, how can you trust him again? And you're just like, please shut up. Um, we all make mistakes. Dude, I, right? I, I would, I, I would so walk away from that person because we all make mistakes and he's yeah. put so much content out that if you want to go ahead and cherry pick it, I mean, give me, yes. give me a freaking break and the success that they've created. So, you know, F those foos, right? Yeah. Oh, totally agree. It's, it's, it's a funny thing, especially at a bank. You know, what gets me even more is when I'm at an investment firm and I'm keynoting or whatever it is I'm doing and I'll mention him and they go, who's that? And I immediately go, hmm, like how well read are you? Like who, like you've got to know people in your own space. It's like, it's like being in an investment firm and then not knowing who Jamie Dimon is. You're kind of like, eh, yeah. how do you not know that? Or a marketer. That's how I test marketers all the time. I'm like, do you know who Gary Vaynerchuk is? I feel like, who's that? I'm like, how do you not know who that is? You're a marketer. You can hate <laughs> yeah. him or you love him, but you're, you're fired, right? Um, I love his book, even though, I mean, I think that he's probably going to come out with a new one uh, or a new version of it, but I do love crushing it still. Um, that jab, jab, right hook, whatever, I'm saying it wrong. Catchy, me, but catchy, right? Book, I like it. Yeah. 
I like it. Yeah. Um, any Maxwell book, if you're a leader, I'm a big fan of Maxwell. Um, only I have, I didn't do his training course like other people have, but I'm a big fan of him. So five levels of leadership. I think some of the basics in that, um, are really important. And then the last one, EI 2.0, uh, I've probably read that book a hundred times. I mention it in my book. If you had no emotional intelligence, you're sunk in life. So that's a big one. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, what's the best place for folks to learn more, find the book, uh, get a hold of you, et cetera? Yeah, I mean, I think the website probably modaimageconsulting.com and then off to the races there. And I'm obviously all over social media too. So if you just type in Moda or Mila, you'll get it. <laughs> I appreciate you asking. Awesome. All right, Gino, you up? You ready? You're going, you're going uh, black screen on us here. You there, man? I am here. Oh, from from the from the the depths. Tell us. We have a young Mila coming home from school. She got a little backpack on. She throws a backpack down on the table and says, "Grandpa, I had a rough day today." And Grandpa says, "Mila, I don't see any Nazis hiding in the in the bushes shooting at you. So you better suck it up, Buttercup. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's no uh, there's, there's no tough days here. And you know, growing up as an immigrant, you know, learning to speak Serbian, probably being weird, probably being told to get a job probably, you know, learning all those life skills is is what made Mila the person that she is today. And brand is so important out there. And I know people don't want to spend the money, but it truly is an investment in yourself. And it's something that will help you out from, I think, a perspective of life, you know, those tough questions, what's on your mind? What is your ultimate goal? What do you want to be rem rem remembered as? These are all things that are part of your brand, but are also part of your legacy. And I think that if you have, you're an entrepreneur and you're at that point, don't worry about what to post on Instagram. Don't worry about what to post on LinkedIn. First, worry about what your core values are. Worry about defining your core values. Worry about working on your brand and then take the next step. And I think reading this book will give you a lot of clarity. And then secondly, going to Mila's website and possibly scheduling a call to get more clarity on working on your brand will ultimately help you amplify your brand. Well said, G wow. Daddy Mila. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank Gang, you. as always, we believe in buying deals for the long term. Think in decades. I'm Jake. He's the G Daddy and we make it happen. We'll see you next time.